Last year, we took a look at Huion's creative pen display, the Canvas Pro 16 4K, and the awesome team over at Huion have sent me its bigger sibling to test out, the Canvas Pro 24. Huion are obviously a top-notch producer of pen tablets and displays, and their Canvas flagships are no slouch. Along with the super sleek looking Canvas Pro 24 pen display, you get a pen, pen holder and case, which comes with extra nibs and a nib clip, the all-important artist glove, your cables, and a cleaning cloth and manuals. For this piece, I'm going to utilize the screen's 4K UHD screen resolution and create a quick mock-up as a starting point. Having the higher resolution means more pixels can fit into the same area and you retain those nice sharp details even when you're zoomed right in. And the anti-glare etched glass is always impressive to see in action. As well as providing a more stable pen tip when drawing, Pentec 3.0 has better drop resistance and a lesser response time that gives it that natural feeling when drawing. Okay, the mock-up is done a little janky, but it serves its purpose. It was nice to use the pen to draw on the display. Lots of smooth action and glide made it all feel very natural and satisfying. The pen boasts what Huion called Pentec 3.0, which enhances the reliability and drawing experience. All right, let's get this one going. So I was looking through some of my previous videos and I suddenly realized I haven't done a single full interior piece of artwork for this channel. I'm not quite sure how that's happened, but I guess it also makes sense given that I love the fantasy genre and working with big environments when possible. But anyway, we're changing that today, swapping out the epic landscapes for this small bedroom while still hopefully creating something epic in its own way. I've called this piece Close Encounters, paying homage to the awesome Spielberg movie of the same name. The scene where the kid opens the door and heads out towards the alien spacecraft, it always stuck with me. So this piece is a little nod to this and all the other great 70s and 80s alien-centric movies, E.T., The Last Starfighter and Explorers. This stuff fueled me as a kid. First things first, I need to extend the top and bottom of this base image. We've got the blinds and floorboards providing natural perspective lines, so there'll be no room for any sloppy edits. I'll need to make sure they line up nicely if I'm going to extend them. I'll just copy and paste the cleanest sections. I'm usually pretty impatient to move on, so I'll get a half decent blend to start, and then I'll usually revisit at the end, fixing any odd blends that stand out. This is going to be a kid's room, and kid's rooms definitely don't look this empty or clean, so we're going to have to add in some furniture and toys, starting with these bedside drawers. The perspective doesn't quite match up with the room, so first I'll need to fix that. And this will be one of those times when those natural perspective lines on the floors will act as a nice guideline. Then using exposure, selective color, and color fill adjustment layers to match the lighting and colors of the room. Whilst not directly in the path of the most intense light in this scene, there would still be some shadows cast, so I'll add those in using an exposure adjustment layer. Time to add in some toys, and I quickly realized how challenging this scene was going to be. The lighting and colours are very subtle in areas where we're looking through lots of dust and haze, so it's going to take a lot of tweaking to get it right. Let's throw a retro Pepsi can in there. Naturally, I'm going to fill it with lots of goodies from the 80s. It wouldn't be complete without a boombox, and I'm probably going to be saying that a lot, but this will be a nice addition at the end of the bed. One of the good things about working with a scene that has quite a particular lighting and colour setup, quite monochrome, 
means I'll be using more or less the same technique to match the colours and lighting for each element so you get into a nice groove after a while. In this case I'm mostly just using a selective colour and exposure adjustment layers for each of the elements on the floor. That Pepsi can has been staring at me this whole time, looks terrible, so I'm just going to make a quick tweak there and add in some shadow. That's better. A couple of more items should do it for now, we'll go with a telescope by the window. And of course, we got to get the Nintendo in there. That back wall is looking pretty bare, too much negative space, so there's only one film poster we could possibly put there, the greatest movie of all time, Mac and Me. I'm just kidding, it's the Goonies. Time to introduce our character, the cliché kid holding the teddy bear. This asset already had a solid base for shadows and highlights which will make things a lot easier. Just need to refine a few things, tweaking the colours and accentuating the highlights where needed, but let's crack on with that. Canvas Pro 24 comes into its element when you're painting or retouching work. I'm just going to paint in some highlights, rim lights and the all important glows. The angle I'm working at feels comfortable, the Canvas Pro 24 has a 60 degree tilt support so most will find a sweet spot to work from. And the cable management is simple enough if I wanted to hook it up to another monitor to work off. Ok, I guess this is where we really start to introduce some narrative into the piece. We're going for some type of alien visitation vibe so the idea is to have few elements in the room that are floating upwards near the window, starting with a classic DeLorean. Then a Rubik's Cube which is quite a colourful object so again it's quite tricky to get the visual right. And lastly a toy robot which we'll place a bit higher up. Now I think that looks okay but it feels like it's missing something so let's take it one step further. The plan is to make these floating items appear to be kind of disappearing or disintegrating through the window and wall. To do that I've got various images of powder, I can isolate the highlights to hopefully achieve this desired effect. Let's see how that goes.
and looks okay-ish. The basis for the idea is there, just needs a bit more refining. Let's add some glow. Cool, not too far off the final image reveal, placing in some shadows and a bit more lighting. So here's what we've ended up with, around 4 hours on this one, this was a nice change of scenery, had a lot of fun with all the 80s nostalgia. I even went ahead and made an alternate version mixing up the colour palette to reference Close Encounters. I think I still prefer the blue one, not too sure, let me know which is your favourite in the comments below. I've said it before, but I personally find pen display tablets more suited to actual painting or touch-ups and highlight work. But the more I use pen displays to create photo manipulations, the more fluid the process comes. I do like that feeling of getting up close to the work, something a standalone tablet doesn't give you. Thanks again to Huion, and for those interested in the Canvas Pro 24 4K, I'll add a link to the product in the description below. And finally, a big thank you to you for watching. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe for more Photoshop content.